Go ahead and worship him in the Holy Ghost. In the Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. You are worthy to be praised and magnified. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. King of glory, we want to thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for supplying all our needs. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for the miracle of today. Thank you for the miracle of this month. Thank you for the miracle of this year. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for building us from glory to glory. And we thank you for this glorious time with the leaders. Father, I pray that everyone here will continue to be an instrument of grace, an instrument of glory, an instrument of greatness. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And let somebody shout the loudest hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise God, praise God. I want to welcome you for this leader session, and um, it is a very strong session. I want to bless God for the, uh, our mother in Israel and all the leaders. Amen. I want to bless the name of the Lord for watching over every leader and sustaining you within this glorious, wonderful time in this COVID-19 that is doing a great job. And so we give God the glory. Give the Lord a clap offering. Wonderful. Amen. All right. Be seated. Um, I know that this is also the time that we get online, uh, sharing the word with the brethren around the world. I'm going to be sharing with us something that my daddy shared with me um, yesterday on the things on on God's will in such a time like this. And um, in continuation with the message, we're looking at A20. We've been carrying a series from A1 today to the A20. Now, what I'm sharing with us is to stay active and contend for the faith. Stay active, stay alive, and contend for the faith. Some of the things that you will hear me say in a few minutes are things you should watch out because of the season and the time. Having a prophetic insight helps you to enjoy the timing. If you are blind and ignorant, you will suffer. But when you have an understanding of the time, you are at peace. You will enjoy the blessings of the Almighty God. And so I'm going to be talking with us. And I'm going to be sharing with us, not just preaching, but speaking prophetically for you to keep yourself alive, to keep yourself fervent, to keep yourself hot because of the time that we're living in. There are many distractions. There are many forces that are calling for our attention. And if there's any other time in the history of our life that we will be we will need to be more active and more alive in our faith is the time that we're living in. More than any other time that you must stay awake. You must stay awake to contend for your faith. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. I need to put you into remembrance that if there is a time you will need to fight and keep your faith, it is this time. If there is a time that you will need to readjust yourself so that you can enjoy your covenant work with God, it is this time. That which has been delivered to us, our salvation. There are forces 
there are demands, there are forces that want to take our salvation from us. That's why you see all the global gang up. A lot of things are going behind the scene, songs of wickedness. I think the yesterday or day before yesterday, one of the architects of the global happening was arrested by the American government. Even though he's the richest man in the world right now, he's in custody. God Almighty will allow the wicked to use the wicked to deal with the wicked. A few days ago, in Kaduna, a, an Islamic scholar called on one of the Muslim converts and said to him, can you come and talk to me more about Jesus? Because I realize that the COVID-19 is not killing Christians. It's killing Muslims more. So it shows that the Christian God is the living God. So, uh, day before yesterday, he said he's not doing his Ramadan. He's going to bow down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, God is working amazing works. There is such contention going on to take our faith from us. In this time, we must see a lot. A lot of men and women will compromise their faith. Compromise their faith in the days ahead. In the months ahead. And that's why I'm speaking to you to beware of falsehood. If there is a time that you will need to stand strong in what you believe in holiness, what you believe in the Lord, it is this time as a leader. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. But false prophets also arose from among the people. Just as there will be false teachers among you. I am speaking to you in the current happening. False teachers are not going to come from outside. False teachers will rise up from among us. You must contend for your faith. Who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. Even denying the master who put them. Bringing upon themselves swift destruction. My prayer for all of us is that you will not fall into that trap. The Lord will deliver you from being destroyed by false teachers. Because God will still judge them. I read yesterday again in the midnight when I was done, I read in the news of a young man that opened his mouth, you know, I think was it um, on Wednesday or on Sunday when I was ministering online. And I said something about Christian youths especially who are opening their mouth wide against the fathers. I said, you must be careful or you bring a judgment on yourself. A young man wrote a lot of things a few days ago. I mean, the 12th. Today is the 14th, isn't it? He, 15. He wrote it on the 12th against my father and my mentor. So uh, we are all his, my elder brother, Bishop Oyedepo. He wrote long things, abusing them. 24 hours later, he's dead. So people wrote and says, look at the man. We have been warning you people. Be careful on how you use your mouth. I pray that any judgment that will befall rebels, it will not come near you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So honor the Lord by defending your faith. Honor the Lord by defending your faith in Christ. Honor the Lord by defending your faith in Christ Jesus. It's time for you to prepare yourself, sir. It's time for you to prepare your soul, prepare your spirit. We are living in the most dangerous time in the history of humanity. God in his own wisdom needed to allow what is going on in order for him to renovate the earth. You can imagine the, the volume of, of uh, carbon that was emitted into the air. Because all factories are closed down, right now the, the earth is renewing itself. God had to put this to a stop so that the earth
does not explode. So if there's a time that you need to understand what is God doing, and there's a time that the enemy is also working out his own plans, then some of the nations, some of the agents of, 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 of the queen of heaven are pulling their strength and their resources together. But because it is not time, I have said this to us, the time the Lord will come is the time that we have taken dominance. The church is in charge. A glorious church without sport. A glorious church without sport. A glorious church without recall. That's the kind of church he's coming for. And the moment that begins to happen, rapture will take place. The earth will know that there are people that lived here before we exit the earth. But I tell you in this time, the conspiracies of the wicked like Bill Gates that was arrested. Who can arrest Bill Gates? But when God is at work, that's why God planted Donald Trump. That's why God planted him. I decree and declare in this season, all the days of your life, your life will bring honor to the Lord. Your life will bring honor to the King of Glory. In the name of Jesus. First Peter chapter 3 verse 15. First Peter chapter 3 verse 15. But in your heart, honor Christ the Lord as holy. In your heart, honor Christ. The Lord as holy. Always been prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Be prepared to stand to declare why you have faith in Christ. Why you have faith in the Lord. It's a time of preparation. Preparation for the events of the future. Men who have prepared themselves looking forward to the future will never be taken by surprise because you have prepared yourself to face it. Don't allow anyone, don't allow men, don't allow so-called preachers that will deceive you or colleagues in ministry or friends that you have. Don't allow anyone deceive you. Stay focused. Stay focused and firm in your faith. If there's time that you don't turn to the left and you don't turn to the right, it is such a time like this. The enemy wanted to bring a distraction on us a few days ago. Raising this great house, so much that we have done. People have fallen, for, fell, people fell from the eighth floor to the ground. It is just now when just doing maintenance, the enemy wants to come in. But he has lost it from the beginning. Yeah. You see, because it is not something that we did. But all of these are part of the distraction. Some of my neighbors that are living around my house send me a text message and say, sir, we, we, we stand with you. We have heard what happened. So that means the story has gone wild. But don't allow anything to distract you. Stay strong in your faith. Stay strong in your faith. Make sure you're doing the things that are right. God will always defend you. God will always deliver you. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Let no one deceive you in any way. There are deceptions going on all over the place. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction. You will not be part of that. It is our time. Shout it louder than anyone said. This is my time. I will, I will glorify the king of glory. The enemy will not succeed in my life. The deception of the enemy will never settle around my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of rebellion will never settle around me. It will only come upon the sons of destruction. Can I hear the loudest amen there? So beware of the people that will smuggle themselves among us. 
Satan is making his arrangement. Remember that this, there is a fight, there is a war that has been declared. In the reign of the spirit. But for us covenant children that are going to hold fast to our faith, victory is sure. But beware of the people that will smuggle themselves into the church to deceive many. It's going to happen. I'm speaking to you of the picture and the events that will be. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. For certain people have crept unnoticed. Who long ago were designated for this condemnation? Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now don't be so surprised to see people you think that are sound believers suddenly denying the Lordship of Jesus. Denying the Lordship of Jesus may not be just speaking out, but with their lifestyle. With their lifestyle, they deny the Lordship of Christ. That's why Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15, Matthew 7 15, he said, beware of false prophets who come to you, who come to you, who come to you, who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Be careful. Be careful. These people will not come from outside. They will rise up from inside. Be careful that you save yourself. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets who will come to you in sheep clothing. Think they are wonderful believers in Christ, not knowing that they are the agents of darkness. They are signed in order to come and distort, to come and destroy, to come and divert. And that's why you won't be surprised to see people that will turn away from the faith, from the way of truth, into myths, into falsehood. You'll be hearing things that sometimes you stand and say, what? I, I can't believe that. Yeah, don't be surprised. You're going to see things. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. And we turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. People that used to hold the truth People that believe in holiness. People that believe in the principles of God's word. People that believe in the righteousness of Christ and the deity of the Lord will suddenly begin to believe in the lies of the devil. You must watch it. You must watch it as some of the brethren that you may know from among us. And when I'm talking among us, I'm talking about the family of the Lord. Some will rise up suddenly and begin to re resist the truth. We are living in a time that many people will not endure the truth. They will not endure sound doctrine. God needed to do what he has done in order to, for him to shut down the system that the true believers will go back to their Asian landmarks. Go back to their Asian innocency. All these drama on the stage, all this kind of falsehood, all the kind of display, the lies and deception. God needed to shut it down so that you can return to the Asian land. Return to the Asian pattern. Walking in holiness, walking in humility, walking with the fear of the Lord, allowing the word of God control everything about your life. God is raising a generation that are not going to be miracle seekers. But men and women that signs and wonders will follow them. Men and women that will crave after the way of God and not after the acts of God. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time is coming. And now is it. And the time is coming. When people will not endure sound teaching. If you go on the internet and see all the posting that is done against the church of Jesus Christ are people within the church of Christ. They 
They cannot stand sound doctrine. Having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. That's why you must contend for the faith. That's why you must be alive in the spirit for you to be able to discern. As a believer, you must bring glory, honor, and dignity. If others are rocking it and bringing it to shame and bringing disgrace to the name of the Lord Jesus, you should bring honor. As a leader, as a pastor, as a deacon, as a deaconess, your life should bring honor, dignity. Because of your service and the work, your work with God, the uncompromising lifestyle, because of the life of holiness and godliness, man will respect the faith. Let not your life bring shame. Let not your life bring disgrace. Let men not look down on the faith because of your actions. Let men be able to know this is a forthright man or woman. This is a man that stands, a woman that walks in the righteousness of Christ. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 8. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 8 is a deacon likewise. Must be dignified. You must understand it's a unique position. It's a unique ministry. As a pastor, as a deacon, as a deaconess, it's a holy calling. It's a glorious calling. It's an honorable calling. Must be dignified, not double tongue. Don't say one thing and do another thing. Don't deceive yourself, friends. This life is a pilgrimage journey. You have a date when you will leave this earth. Live to glorify God every day. God allow. COVID-19 in order to awaken us to count our days like David would pray, teach me to number my days and to apply my heart unto wisdom. Can I tell you that this is the time that God is causing men and women to separate themselves from the wrong associations. COVID-19 came in for you to know certain people you don't need in your life. That's why you were restricted from movement. So that you can have a reflection. You can think. And you, can, you, you will understand at this particular stage that there are too many loads you have carried that you don't need. Drop those loads. Those weights that will weigh you and limit your speed in your work with the Lord. Drop them. Because God wants you to fly and go with a just speed. Don't allow anything that will make you to begin to begin to struggle to move. For the time is coming. And we're living in the time. Don't be a double tongue person. Not greedy for this honest game. What is it that you're looking for? Why should you lie to get money? Why should you try to deceive people? That's why I've said this to preachers. If you are genuine preacher, genuine servant of God, and God is the one who called you and gave you appointment and said, come and work for me. It doesn't matter the lockdown anywhere. Heaven will take care of you. Don't be greedy for this honest gain. Not addicted to much wine. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. If your conscience is pricking you over something, settle it. Don't suppress it. Don't close it. Because if there is anything the Holy Spirit will use, it's your conscience. Don't be so arrogant and, gre and, and stubborn. The Holy Spirit is pricking you inside of your conscience and you're trying to suppress it. Say, so make changes. Make amends. So that you are not taken by surprise. I pray for us. That you will not belong to the camp of the foolish virgins. You will, come, you will belong to the camp of the wise virgins. When your conscience is pricking you. Make adjustment. Make adjustment. Because the days ahead 
are tougher days. But those tough days are great days for the, for the saints. Remember, the thicker the darkness, the brighter our light will shine. The thicker. Kamorosha grabodona. Mokoya kaborosha klabrehe donaraba. I decree that this year, everything that my father has packaged for you, you will surely enjoy divine covenant. The mercies of the Lord will speak over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. See yourself as the only one serving the Lord. See yourself as the only one that heaven is looking at and saying, we are looking at you. Bring honor to us in such a time like this. Surround yourself with some believers. Let's support one another. Let's strengthen one another. But at the same time, cut off anything that will make you to miss the mark. I was sharing with a man today, a few minutes, and I said to him, with all that you're doing, if at the end of the day, with all that you're suffering, you are the first, you are the one laboring to see that your family come out and become what God destined them to be. You are a great person, a medical practitioner. But I said to him, if the things you're doing, you will allow the enemy make you compromise in immorality and you miss the mark, how terrible will it be? You have known the Lord. You suffer in this world, you go and suffer there. And I said to him, cut off. Disconnect yourself from anything that would defile you. I pray for all of us here. Jesus said, if your hand will cause you to sin, he said, cut it off. If your eyes will cause you to, to sin, I'm, plug it off. He's not talking about just our physical eye, but he's talking about something that is connected and attached to us. If that will take away your joy, your peace of salvation, the joy of salvation, that David prayed the prayer, created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me, cast me not away from thy presence. If there is a prayer that you need to pray, that kind of prayer, whatever is going to be, that will temper with your salvation, cut it off. Let's address one another in faith. Because we are living in the last hour. In football, they call it injury time. That's the time we're living in. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with, with your heart. Addressing one another based on the word of God. Let your conversation be around the word of God. Addressing one another with, with, with the psalms and, and hymns. Don't discuss things that do not have spiritual value. Don't discuss, don't, don't engage yourself in things that do not have eternal value. I tell you the truth. One of the most best, better time I've ever had since my birth on earth is this year. This COVID-19, God allowed it in order to bless me. It's the best. You see, when the enemy thought evil, God would turn it around for good. If the priests of this world had known that staging and causing rebellion uh, for the crucifixion of Jesus, if they have known that what they were planning would turn out, the priests of this world wouldn't have crucified him. Everything will work for our good. Everything will work for our good. Everything will work for our good. Everything is working for the good of the church. The true church will come out stronger. The true church will come out triumphant. I tell you, we're coming out polished, glorious, shining in the light of righteousness. Constantly examine yourself. Don't just be driving your car without thinking about maintaining the car. Your life is a vehicle. This vehicle, you must examine it. 
Examine your faith. You may think you are in the faith and you are not in the faith. See, begin to see certain uh, lukewarmness, certain, you know, um, non-challenge attitude, coldness towards the things of the kingdom. You think, oh no, it's just, you just give certain excuse or certain reasons. But you don't know that you are failing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 as I close, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Examine yourself. Gauge yourself to see am I in the faith? Is this the level of fervency I can have in Christ? Is it the level of hunger? Am I walking in line with God's divine principles for my life? Examine yourself. Test yourselves. The terrible thing that can happen in the life of any believer is for God to withdraw. One thing I crave for all the days of my life, I don't joke with it, is the presence of the Almighty. The presence of God. Examine yourself. Whatever will make God to withdraw. The church in the book of Revelation were doing their job, running, doing the activity, going through persecution, and they were all doing, all going through all of that stuff, but they did not know that they have lost their first love. Until the Lord came to them and said, I've seen all your sacrifice. I've seen all your labor. I've seen all your suffering. I've seen all that you have done for me and for my kingdom. But he said, one thing I have against you. You've thrown away your first love. He said, go back and pick it from where you throw it. I speak to all leaders. Wherever you have thrown your first love, go reclaim it. Go regain your place in Christ. The things of this world have crept into your heart. And they are struggling with the space of the Holy Spirit. In those early days, I know some of us will remember, there used to be a calendar with a human heart. You remember that great calendar? In those days, with a calendar with a human heart. Two hearts. The heart of a believer that allow Satan to begin to carry chair, cushy, what, into the heart. And suddenly that believer became so worldly conscious. And then the heart of the believer that guarded his heart, the enemy came all around to attack and the enemy could not succeed because the heart was totally given to the Lord. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard it. Protect it. Examine yourselves if you are in the faith. There is no better way to enjoy this life than to go through this life in the truth of God's word. Jesus said, I am the way. John chapter 14 verse 6 and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Let's walk through the grounds of truth. Let's allow truth to take over our lives. Let's allow the word of God rule us in everything that we do. I am the way. Whatever I need in this life, he is the way to open it. I am the truth. He guides me in the way that I will have rest. He doesn't want me to, to be on the path where I will be troubled, worried. But a path that will give me rest. There is a way that seemeth right unto, the, unto men, but the end thereof is a way of destruction. But there is a way that is narrow. Only few make it there. And my prayer is that you will make it there. Amen. You will make it there. Amen. Rise up on your feet because we're going to pray. I pray for you. Paul said in Galatians 1, I read these scriptures. If there is any time that you need to buy into the gospel, the true message of the cross. It is this time. Listen to what he said. In Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I am astonishing. That you are so quickly deserting him. Who called you into the grace of Christ. And are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one. But there are some who trouble you. 
and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be a curse. It's not the first time Paul will be talking to his, to his leaders and members of the church. Then he said, listen to what he said now in the closing part of this verse. He said, as we have said before. So now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you have received, let him be a curse. That's how serious it is. For you to defend your faith. For you to protect that which you have been given. Therefore, devote yourself as leaders, pastors. Devote yourself to the apostolic teachings I have delivered into your, into your hands. The things you have heard me all through the years. In fellowship, in teaching, keep the steps. Help to sustain your fellowship, your zone. Know that in these trying times, it is the best time for the church. It is the most glorious time. I want you to take a moment and bow your heads and examine yourself. Examine your faith. You are pastors. You are deacons and deaconesses. You are leaders. I want you personally to examine yourself and to re-present yourself. Those of us that are still thinking things are normal, things are no more. They are not normal. God wants to make use of you, pastors, deacon and deaconesses. He will have to work on you for the assignment that lies ahead. Present your life to him. Ask God Almighty to purge you. To wash you. And make you clean. That which I have said to you, I said again. If I would need to be repeating what I'm saying, I will say it again. Contend for the faith. There is a struggle over your life to discourage you. To deviate you, to distract you. Pray and ask God that, Lord, those things I have allowed them to also settle in my heart, I remove them. Those things that are struggling for space with you in my life, Lord, no, I remove them. Be the Lord of my life. Let no man deceive himself. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man saw, that is what he will reap. You can hide it from man, but nobody can hide it from God. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Father, deliver us from the worlds that are coming or worlds that have come in sheep clothing deliver us deliver me Lord adjust my life I adjust my life I am ready to take those painful steps to readjust my life so that I can fulfill my purpose. Take my hands, O oh Lord, and lead me. Guide me, Father, in your path. Let
Let him that think it stand. Let him stand. Don't deceive yourself. Many will fall. But tell the Lord, Father, give me grace to protect and defend and contend for my faith. Heavenly Father, I come before you this afternoon with your children bowing before your holy presence. Lord, you spoke to me on the things to share with your children. There is such a war from hell to snatch the salvation of believers. To snatch the joy of salvation. To snatch their innocency. And Father, you said if there is any time we will need to contend for our faith, it is such a time like this. And precious Lord, I pray for your mercies and your sanctifying power. Lord, on every leader, it's not an ordinary calling. It is a dignified calling. It is a holy calling. It is a glorious calling. Father, I pray that whatever has made anyone to become lukewarm, to become nonchalant, to allow so many things to take the space that is meant for the Holy Spirit, please, I plead, Lord, for your mercy. I am pleading with you, Father, for your cleansing power that you will wash and purify every leader in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, please take over every heart. Please take over every life. Lord, from this moment, as we begin to package ourselves for the great assignment that you will have us do, Father, please, I pray, Take everyone here and use them for your glory. Amen. Beloved, I pray for you today that the Lord God Almighty will give you all the strength that you need to move in the right direction. The Lord will bless you with peace. The Lord will take away trouble from you. The Lord will make you triumphant. I pray that the blessing of the Lord, the blessing that I, as your father, is enjoying, I pray that that blessing will rest upon your life. It will rest upon your family. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will cause you to overcome. Overcome every trap. Overcome every setup. Overcome every manipulation. I pray that whatever will take away the joy of salvation, I uproot it from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, turn all the powers that are opposing your children, opposing their family. Father, let them begin to fight each other. Grant your children, Lord, uncommon joy, uncommon peace. I pray that my father will remember you. The Lord will remember your family for good. Everything you will do from this day forward, I decree and declare over your life, you will not fail. You will not fumble. You will not be frustrated. You will enjoy the fullness of the covenant. I sanctify you. I sanctify your family. None of you will die prematurely. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will preserve you. That spirit of the last day, which is the spirit of rebellion, it will have no place to settle in you. It will have no place to settle in your family. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Every test that will come on your way, you will pass that test. 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 In the name of Jesus. I pray that the spirit of grace will empower you. Grace to pray. Grace to serve. Grace to advance the world. Grace to see beyond the natural. Grace for righteousness. The Lord empower you in the name of Jesus.
the wicked will not succeed 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 your life is shielded your life is protected I pray that as the sword is passing the sword will never meet anyone in your house the Lord will deliver you the Lord will save you the Lord will keep you and I pray that the love for the Lord will increase your passion will increase your joy in the Lord will increase I decree and declare that from this day every adjustment that is required the Lord will empower you to make those adjustments in the name of Jesus and therefore I deliver into your life grace 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 my God establish you my God settle your case my God make you a living testimony you will reach your goal 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 the Lord will give you understanding the Lord will give you understanding you will have a deeper understanding of the time I crucify every self I crucify every flesh I crucify the works of the flesh I cut off the arm of the wicked one every challenge that will come your way you will triumph you will not be a victim you will be a victor trials will come but trials will give you testimonies you will triumph 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 my god will make your life fruitful my god will make your life attractive before you all mouths opening their mouth to contend and slander mock my god and my father will shut those mouths in the mighty name of jesus those voices are silence they will not prevail over your life you will be an inspiration my god and my father immune you from every affliction immune your family from every attack in the name of jesus i pray over your life you will live long you will enjoy divine lifting i bless you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit